Why should we worry if increasing areas of our lives are governed by market values? Well, let's go back to the friendship case and the wedding toast case. In many domains of life, what makes a good or a social practice valuable or meaningful is somehow displaced or crowded out or corrupted even if it's bought and sold. And it's not always easy to figure out what social practices have that feature. But it matters a lot, especially for public life and public decisions that we make about the use of market mechanisms. Cash incentives are used increasingly as instruments of policy. I mentioned the example of the charity that offers $300 cash for sterilization to achieve a worthy end. What about what some have called health bribes? The NHS has begun experimenting with the use of cash incentives to get people to adopt healthy behavior, to take their prescription medications, to show up for a prescribed routine of jabs, or in the case of those who are overweight, paying people to lose weight up to 425 pounds to lose weight and keep it off for up to two years. So let's begin our discussion by seeing how people view health bribes by the NHS. Let's begin just with a, an informal survey, a show of hands. How many think it's a policy worth trying? And how many f would be opposed? How many find it objectionable? Let's first see those who would be in favor, at least of giving it a try. And how many would be opposed? The majority would give it a try. A substantial minority are opposed. Let's start first, and we have, roving, we have volunteers with roving microphones so that we can hear what people have to say. Let's hear first from those who are opposed. Why would you object? I would object because it's a government organization, and I think it's a thin end of the wedge, and it starts out as an incentive and ends up as a penalty and tax and fee. It ends up as a penalty, a tax, and fee. How does that happen? You're asking? Um, because the NHS is trying to reduce its costs, and if the incentive is not enough, they'll go to the next stage. They'll fine people for being overweight? Yes. Uh, a fat tax. <laughs> That's what you foresee down the road. I do. And why would that be bad? Um, because then it's an intrusion on uh, individual freedoms and rights to express yourself and live the lifestyle you want to live. All right. What would you say? It's a difficult balancing act because on the one hand you have to account for the money that the government spends on the tax that it takes. On the other hand, it has to balance the freedom of anyone to eat whatever they want. But how is but the, the freedom cost of that act, yeah. i.e., going and eating lots of hamburgers every day, all day, yes. if that has a net impact on the running cost of the NHS, then why not place an incentive, albeit an opt in incentive, which is volu voluntary, to give an incentive to people to live a healthier life? It might save on money. average, the healthy life would be, i.e., your body weight mass ratio should be X. If right. you hit that bell curve, then right. would give you the incentive. So it would save, the basic argument is, it would save money for the NHS in the long term. All in, increase the welfare of the society because it, there would be less tax spent on overweight people overall, right. on average. Right, that's the savings. As All an right. opt-in option. And so you would favor either the financial cash incentive or, by that logic, the tax. Yes, as, as, as long as people can opt in and are perfectly aware of their No, the tax, the tax you can't opt well, in. Well, I'd, I'd stick to the opt-in option, not the tax. Why, though? The same logic of saving the NHS money, making the society more healthy, increasing the general welfare, yeah. applies equally with the tax, doesn't it? 
Yes, but not many politicians would, would allow that. But we're not election. politicians here. We're, we're trying to reason it through. <laughs> yes, in principle. I, accept, I, accept, I accept both points, but it wouldn't be politically viable. Yeah. It might create a perverse incentive for people to have sort of the wrong behavior, like putting on weight to then fall into the category of the obesity. I see. Or the same with the jobs. I would delay my jobs, my vaccinations, so that I, fall, again, can fall into... It's the behavior, it's not a question of tax, a behavior. It's not a what? A question of tax, it's a question of behavior. So it's, it might create the perverse incentive if some, there might be someone with a very fit physique who said, 425 pounds on offer, all right, I'll consume huge amounts of junk food, so I'll be eligible, well, and then Italian. I'll lose it all. So alternative behavior is... Uh, a strat alternative strategies as part of our culture, but yes, or delaying with the jobs so to fall into the category of those who are called upon from the NHS. With and do you think, in the case of smoking is another area where this is, do you think there might be people, non-smokers, who would say, <laughs> there's money in it for quitting, I think I'll start smoking two packs well, a day. Well, border, well, there are some on and off smokers, yes. They yeah. might have wow. incentive. All right, who else? In the back. I think that getting money involved is just a bit lazy. And the risk is, even if it might work in some cases, that it stops us tackling the underlying issues that are involved. Such as? Well, losing weight. Um, I don't know, there are all sorts of... Uh, you know, I mean, if, for example, we'd introduce money to help people stop losing weight 50, 100 years ago, then maybe the advances we'd made around nutrition and understanding the links between healthy lifestyles and doing well would be less well, less well developed. And that's leaving aside all the you know, untold consequences of introducing money into something so, uh, so important that should be fair for everyone. And is there something unfair about cash incentives for losing weight? Yes, because they have a disproportionate impact on people with different levels of, of wealth. And you know, we don't actually... It's want a society where uh, wealth, wealth conquers, conquers all. Well, that, that's exactly what we're trying to sort out <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think I've solved it, haven't I? I... <laughs> well, you've, you've gotten us a good part of the way. <laughs> but suppose money, in this case, could conquer obesity, just hypothetically. Yeah then isn't that, wouldn't that be an area where we would want money to conquer? Oh, damn it, that's, that's quite good. I mean, I mean if, in the, in, the, in the incredibly unlikely event, and this, I guess, is, is we're talking about probably, that in this one isolated instance, money proves to be the one major determining factor as to whether people are obese or thin, then in some weird philosophical world, you'd have to say, well, all right. But that is so unlikely that I don't think it's worth considering. All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs>